Okay, okay, yeah, let's get started then. Yeah? Okay, uh, good, so let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the session on Lean Theory. Uh, my name is Rohit, I will be uh, the session chair. Uh, so, just a couple of uh, quick announcements. So, every talk, uh, we have three talks in this session. Every talk will be for 18 minutes, followed by three minutes of QA. Uh, I will first take the questions uh, from the in person audience and then we will move to the online audience. Uh, and I will uh, request the speakers to uh, repeat the questions from the in person audience over the microphone for the benefit of those uh, joining online. Um, okay, so let's get started. So, uh, uh, the first talk will be by Christine Conaghy, who will talk about exploiting extensive form structure in empirical game theory analysis. Please go ahead. Okay, well, hello, good morning. Uh, I will now present to you a uh, joint work with Nathan, uh, my colleague, and Mike Wellman at the University of Michigan, exploiting extensive form structure in empirical game theoretic analysis. That is a mouthful, I will now break it down for you. So, Whenever we are attempting to reason about a very large, complex game, a complete analytical description is infeasible. And so, empirical game theoretic analysis, or EGTA, is a principled methodology for de developing a model for such games in that case. Instead, we only have access to simulation data, and our considerations are restricted to a select number of strategy profiles. The goal is for the empirical model to be a good enough approximation of the true game that we can then analyze and solve it. The challenge, of course, is that the strategy space may be vast and the format of the game incredibly intricate. I do want to highlight that this is not a specific algorithm, but rather a general methodology for this uh, problem. So, how does it work? In a nutshell, given our game, which we can only access through the simulator's output, we first accrue empirical data by passing only select strategy profiles to the simulator from the restricted set, which is far smaller than the true game's strategy space. The research question about how best to do this is known in our circles as the strategy exploration problem. Then we generate a game model from the empirical data, which is a collection of noisy payoff samples and partial history traces of what happened in the game. Now, the vast majority of work to date in EGTA has utilized a normal form empirical model. So, the standard normal form game model for EGTA consists of a matrix of all the strategy profiles within the restricted set, where each entry is an estimate of the payoff for the corresponding profile. And from there, we can solve the matrix for the Nash equilibrium using our method of choice. So, now that I've explained both the setup for EGTA and the standard for empirical models, I ask whether it is necessary to use this type of model always, regardless of the true game's format, which brings me to extensive form games. So in an extensive form game, the multi-agent system is represented as a game tree and comprises far more information. The strategy space is also less atomic and instead explicitly maps the various decision points in time to their respective action spaces. This complex domain makes the strategy space far more vast relative to the size of the state space. So for instance, if there were no constraints on time or within the environment, the game tree could conceivably be infinitely large. Um, other things that are explicitly represented in an extensive form game are information sets highlighted in green, um, chance events highlighted in blue, and then, unlike in the normal form model, where the payoffs were explicitly tied to a strategy profile, they are instead all uh, represented at the very bottom of the tree, at the leaves, highlighted in pink. I note also that throughout this talk, we assume perfect recall. So, this wealth of information here is often deemed too complicated to be effectively modeled in EGTA, hence the standard use of the normal form game model. However, our work argues that extensive form structure in EGTA can be exploited and improve both model fidelity and strategy exploration compared to the normal form representation. This is a brief outline of the remainder of my talk, beginning with our new framework, which we call tree exploiting EGTA. 
So the way this framework works is that it replaces the normal form matrix model with an extensive form model, a parameterized tree. The parameters of the tree are estimated from the simulation data. So instead of a model defined only by the various strategy profiles and their corresponding payoffs, we instead have one defined by a finer grained expression of the observations, actions, and temporality that come to define a strategy profile. So to illustrate how tree exploiting EGTA works, I would utilize game one as my example. In this abstract game, we have two strategic players and nature. First player one chooses from 10 possible actions. Then a chance event occurs, either A or B, corresponding to a discrete probability distribution contingent on what player one did. So in this instance, we have 10 of these discrete distributions. Then player two observes the event, the event, but not player one's choice, and then chooses from 10 possible actions depending on which event happened. So the game tree has two types of parameters. The rewards at the end of the tree that are highlighted in purple, that I will be referring to as utilities, uh, just to avoid confusion with strategy chaos, which will be more clear later. And then the conditional probability distributions for the chance nodes highlighted in green that yield our stochastic observations. One important feature of this model format is that the parameters are estimated using all of the relevant simulation data accrued at that, up until that point, and not just data belonging to a specific strategy profile. So as an illustration of what I mean, suppose I simulate one strategy profile 100 times, doesn't matter how many, I'm just saying 100, and let's say that the two possible paths through the tree are highlighted in pink, depending on which event happens, A or B, and let's say that we observed A some A sub 1 times. Now let's also say that we simulated a second strategy profile with the paths now highlighted in teal, and we observed A again, this time some A sub 2 times out of 100. So as you can see from where the arrows are, there's overlap on the way to the first chance node because player one's choice was the same across both profiles. And so this allows us to estimate the probability distribution for this particular chance node using the number of A observations from both profiles, and then of course finding the complement for B, and then we have our parameter estimated and ready. And then we can estimate the utilities for each of those three leaves by taking the simple average of the noisy samples from the simulator over the number of times that each leaf was reached. And of course we can take advantage of overlapping tree paths here too, as you can see in the leaf on the far right where the pink and teal arrows overlap completely. So, as I just illustrated, tree exploiting EGTA is useful for estimation because I reuse some parts of the tree structure depending on how the strategy profiles overlap, meaning that my estimated payoff of a strategy profile relies on parameters estimated from all relevant strategy profiles. So in the previous case, we had 200 uh, samples to contend with instead of just 100 per profile. And in computing the payoff, each of the leaf utilities is weighted by how frequently it is reached, depending on chance. And I should mention also that if we were attempting to estimate the payoff for a mixed strategy, then the leaf utilities would also be weighted by the reach probabilities for each of the strategic players as well. By contrast, the normal form model for the same strategy simply averages the noisy samples from just that single strategy profile. In this case, just 100 rounds of simulator output and it is very easy to show that uh, both of these estimates are unbiased estimators. So now we get to the main theoretical result of our paper. Uh, to understand what, uh, what was actually in the theorem, I was first introduced epsilon, which is the worst case error across all players and strategies in estimating the payoffs, defined as on the previous slides. And we denote the errors this way to indicate which empirical model was used. The normal form matrix model with the subscript NF, the tree exploiting parameter model with the subscript TE. And we say that there exist these two positive quantities such that the ratio of the tree exploiting error and the normal form error is equivalent to one over the square root of a constant C. Now, C is a quantity strictly greater than one that is equivalent to the number of strategy profiles from 
the restricted set, the overlap at least once with whatever profile yielded the worst case error for the tree exploding model. So in other words, it measures the amount of overlap amongst the profiles in the restricted set. In our work, we proved that with high probability, the empirical gain corresponding to each model, again denoted with the subscript, was a uniform approximation of the true gain G. Putting all this together, we used uniform approximation to show that the tree exploding model is a strictly tighter approximation of the true gain than the normal form model. So I've explained how we estimate the parameters for the empirical gain model essentially by filling in the blanks that are defined by the format of the model, i.e. what happens when and in what order, um, and the restricted set. But how do we know the shape of the tree, or where the information sets are, or what chance events are observed? Well, in addition to having a general knowledge of the rules, we assume that the partial history traces of the simulator tell us at least some of what happened from root to leaf in the true game meaning that the model is in essence a coarse abstraction of the much larger true game. So to illustrate what I mean by that, here's a second example, game two. It's larger than game one. Uh, the gameplay in the first half, as you can probably see, is identical to what we saw in game one. Player one goes first, A or B happens by chance, and then player two acts on whichever, whichever of the two chance events were observed. Then, in this game, a second chance event, C or D, occurs with a probability conditional on whatever happened on the path up until then. And then finally, player one observes only whether C or D occurred in addition to its own actions, since we uh, assumed perfect recall, and then takes an action, and then the game ends. So to illustrate what a coarsened model may look like, if game two is our true game, and the simulator isn't outputting everything, it's only outputting a partial history, then it might, for instance, output only the first of the two rounds of the events, i.e. whether A or B happened, and the empirical tree might conceivably look like this. So you can see the second event is absent from the tree entirely, however, in order for the game to proceed, uh, player one's strategy at the decision points following player two's actions must still be specified completely even if the empirical game treats the actions at that point atomically with the tuples. So in other words, it's not recognizing whether or not a, a C or B happened or anything like that. It just, an action needs to be taken and it's very similar to what we might be doing in the normal form game with our matrix. Um, and the paper explains this abstraction idea in greater detail. I'm just highlighting it here to contextualize where our empirical game model is coming from. So now the theory is done. It's time for my experimental results. Uh, we wanted to compare how well the tree exploiting EGTA model estimates the true game with the baseline that uses the normal form payoff matrix. So in this plot, you are currently looking at the worst case estimation error over the course of a single run through of EGTA, averaged across multiple trials, and this was uh, done on game one, the example from earlier. In each iteration of EGTA, you add a new strategy to the restricted set, in this case, through a more specific approach to the EGTA methodology, which I will explain in a minute. And as you can see, tree exploiting EGTA yields a better average with less variance. Now this is the same experiment again, this time for game two. In the left plot, uh, we allowed, we assumed that the simulator was outputting both rounds of chance events, A versus B and C versus D, and thus the empirical model was allowed to contain both rounds. And in the right plot, the model only contains the first round of events, A or B, and therefore is coarser, so you can see that the error is a little worse. However, tree splitting EGTA still yielded a better average compared to the normal form curve in blue, which I should mention is the same for both, even if just it's not quite the scale because of the y-axis. This tells us that incorporating even some extensive form structure is beneficial for EGTA. So now the second part of my talk, I will focus on a specific approach to EGTA and how we incorporated extensive structure into it. So the policy space response oracles method, or PSRO, is an automated method for interleaving empirical game modeling with a best response population using RL. It, is a, it reworks the strategy exploration problem where instead of your job being to figure out how to add a new strategy to your restricted set, 
in that step, you specifically will compute a best response, and you're best responding to whatever solution came out of the game analysis step. And the game analysis step has now been replaced with an abstract solver of our choice. So most of the work done in that spread and exploration problem is now done there. So in regular PSRO, when we're using a matrix model, it's not very hard to expand the empirical game model. You're just adding rows and columns to a matrix. But if you're using an empirical game tree, or sorry, if you're using a game tree as your empirical model, adding best responses to your tree is not so obvious. So we find the best response for each reachable information set using the empirical game, uh, within the empirical game, using a simple, simple ta uh, tabular key learning algorithm. We just wanted a simple RL approach to see if it could conceivably be done. So for instance, if my empirical game tree currently looks like this, and these are my best responses, the one on the left for player one, and then the one on the right for each of the information sets of player two, then I can generate a variety of strategy combinations from the restricted set and the new best responses, which I've highlighted in different colors on the upper right. The empirical game tree now has all of these dis additional paths and chance nodes to consider, of course, but we can also reuse other parts of the tree. So in this way, we have additional data so that we can update the parameters we've already estimated, as you can see where the new colors uh, overlap with the original dark gray. And so now in our second experiment, we wanted to combine the tree exploiting model with the new approach to finding the best response, together in a framework that we call tree exploiting PSRO, and we wanted to compare its performance with the baseline, which is regular or normal form PSRO. So in this case, we were finding the Nash equilibrium of the empirical game for our meta-strategy solver, and then finding a best response to it. We used two different solvers for the extensive form model. And in this plot, you are looking at the regret over time of that solution within the true game. For this plot, it was game one. Um, you're looking at the regret over each iteration of PSRO, which halts once no more new strategies can be added to the restricted set. And as you can see, tree exploiting PSRO converged more quickly. And this is the same experiment repeated for game two, with the two different kinds of game models. Again, the one on the left matching the original, and the one on the right coarser and including only the first round of chance events. And again, we see that the regret converges sooner into a lower value more quickly than, more quickly for tree exploiting PSRO, meaning there are some benefits to including even some extensive structure. Okay, so this concludes my presentation of our joint work, which is meant to be a first step on leveraging extensive structure for game reasoning and learning within the EGTA framework. And I think I'm about out of time, uh, but I can assure you more is coming in the near future. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time.